All right, hello and welcome everyone. Before we get into talking about everything to do with the Jovian Concord, today's video is sponsored by Discord Nitro. For those of you not aware, Discord Nitro is a $10 a month subscription service that provides not only a large library of games, but also monthly Warframe perks, ranging from full deluxe bundles, as I've covered on the channel previously, to this month's perk, which is a full week resource booster, which is gonna be perfect for farming up all the materials you're gonna need for all the new stuff we're gonna be talking about in this video. Thanks again to Discord for sponsoring this video, and now we can just jump on into it. Okay, so the Jovian Concord is finally here. This is the big Gas City remaster, Wisp release, new boss, bunch of new content, more weapons, more mods, this stuff that we have been waiting a little while for. And after playing it for a little over eight hours and kind of messing with a lot of the content that I've been able to get into so far... I wanted to go over a lot of stuff with the update and kind of give you guys impressions on everything and kind of the important things from the update uh, and like the patch notes that there is to talk about at current. So with that, let's just get started with obviously the Gas City remaster itself. First and foremost, there is a new resource here called Hexanon that you're going to need for most of the new items in the update, and they're going to come from Amalgams, but also a few mission rewards here and there, mostly in the new game mode, which you're also going to talk about. So... We have the Amalgams. These are shiny new Corpus enemies, but they are fairly normal, honestly. I expected them to be maybe a little different, but their special abilities don't really seem to matter much whenever you can just vaporize them. So, they do not have any crazy sentient resistances like we may have uh, assumed they would, but they are really cool, and they can dish out quite a bit of damage if you are not taking them out quickly. So, they're a nice addition to the Corpus roster of enemies, I'll say. And then... Besides that, we have Disruption, which is the new game mode, which incorporates a lot of the Amalgam enemies being used for it. Basically, with this mode, you're going to get a key for a terminal from an Amalgam enemy. You're going to put the key in the terminal. It is going to either give the entire team a buff or the entire team a debuff, and there's going to be an enemy that is going to try and rush down the point. If you kill that enemy, it completes that point. There are four of those points per wave, um, and then each wave you get a reward. This is a pretty fast game mode that I played a bit of, obviously, for the event that includes it. Uh, and the event is really easy. It doesn't take a huge amount of time or anything like that. But the thing I'll say is that it made it very obvious that this game mode is maybe a little underdeveloped in some ways, I'll say. Uh, for me, the problems that I had with it are that it feels like it should be extremely snappy and focused, but there's a lot of weird dead air for it. Um, there are markers that will pop up on like where you need to go and these things you need to defend, but then you don't get like markers for what enemy has the key you need to get to put it into the terminal, and then from there, where the enemy is coming from that is trying to rush down and destroy the terminal the ui and stuff and like the direction of it just doesn't seem uh fast paced enough for what it seems to want to be i guess uh it's cool and it's like good in theory and i think it could be polished up to be extremely fun but as it stands right now it's like just kind of fine uh which you know it could be a lot worse uh the rewards for it are a little kind of up in the air. It's mostly just relic stuff, and there's not really any super special rewards there, but of course it is going to be a place to farm the new Hexanon stuff for anyone that needs those materials for the new items. So there's that. And then, besides that, Wisp is out now. So those of you that have been following my opinions on Wisp know that I thought that her design was incredibly cool looking before we saw all of her powers, and then we saw her powers, and I was not very enthused with her powers. Thankfully, after using Wisp for like, let's say six of the eight and a half or so hours I've played of the update so far, I actually really like her a lot. She's very fun. And while I don't think that she is like insanely, like maybe like crazy useful and doesn't really have a home that I've like found out about yet really um her powers work together work together in a really nice way like her one all of the buffs on that are super super relevant and they're like very quality for the team uh her two is like useful especially on the new tile set for getting around very quickly uh and it's just kind of fun to use and her three is like solid enough crowd control and using it in combination with her one gives you even better crowd control and the ability to teleport across like like vast distances that you would not be able to otherwise um so that's really really cool the really disappointing thing about wisp unfortunately is her four which is her big sunbeam and like it can kill enemies 
but it feels really inefficient in doing so because like i was using a nearly 300 percent strength build and it was like kind of killing level 40 enemies i guess and seemed to do basically no damage whatsoever to most eximus types so it was like yeah neither here nor there definitely the bulk of what's good about wisp feels like her one through three right now uh and hopefully maybe her four gets patched up but of course we're going to talk about that a lot more in wisps full video besides that Weapon stuff. I have messed mostly with the Fulmin and the Comorex. Uh, mostly, even beyond that, just the Fulmin. The Fulmin is a new kind of... It's sort of an Archiplasmor, but it also has a mode switch where it becomes a lightning machine gun. And also, it is a battery weapon, so it does not reload, it recharges. Which seems to all be things that are working out for it. I'm not huge on the lightning machine gun form of this weapon, uh, but the kind of Archiplasmor type lightning shotgun shockwave thing that it has going on is extremely fun uh, and performed pretty well at the levels I was using that. It it's not completely formed out for me yet, but I am working on it, so definitely expect a Why Would You Use on that. Uh, the Comorex, on the other hand, is a very strange weapon. So this is a sniper rifle that changes fire mode based on how far you are zoomed in and if you zoom in all the way it gets like explosive shots and it's it's got some real strange stats attached to it like not as much crit as you'd probably anticipate from a sniper rifle at this point in the game and stuff like that um it's a weapon that i'm gonna have to put more time into before i really know how i feel about it but it is at the very least interesting uh and then the Sinex, i have not used the Sinex yet disclaimer however its stats do not give me a huge amount of hope for it to be super good i would love to be wrong about that um but that is the weapon that i decided that i was going to skip on and focus more on the other stuff for leveling uh so that's for new weapon stuff that's kind of what's up so far uh in terms of new mods we have a number of new mods uh in this update but a lot of them are kind of just like gimmicky stuff. There are three new mod sets. There's the arrow, the modus, and the proton stuff. Um, a lot of these just have to do with movement things or like really gimmicky, like landing from high falls and stuff like that. And that's all cool. And maybe one or two of these mods will find a home. But I don't think the set bonuses themselves are actually really good enough uh, in order for it to see any like real use. On the other hand, there is one mod that is not in a set that kind of caught my eye and might actually see a lot of use, but it kind of depends, and that is Repair Kit. So Repair Kit is basically just health regeneration for your Sentinel, which, of course, is just more defensive stuff for Sentinels, helps keep them alive for longer. Will this help keep Sentinels alive for much longer? It's kind of hard to say. Probably not, because it maxes out, I think, at 6 health per second, I believe it is. And that's not super amazing, but uh, if this mod is really easy to get a hold of, it might see a good bit of use for people that maybe like can't get a hold of Primed Regen and things like that. Besides that, speaking of mods we have mod packs 2.0 so mod packs 2.0 is basically that they are removing all of the mod packs that are just basically they were loot boxes where you'd open them up and you'd be a random selection of mods they are taking that out completely and instead you are getting these just like completely standardized these are packs of mods that you can buy they come unleveled and they also have a thousand endo and a bunch of credits with them and they're 75 platinum each and i think they are definitely a step in the right direction. However, from what they look like, as you can see here, we have like the lightning bolt symbol for one of them, the toxin symbol for the toxin mod pack. And then like you have like the golden clover thing for all the crit chance mods that are in a pack together. Here's the deal. And this, I know this is like, this is just a suggestion. I'm just making a suggestion here. I think that DE stands to make a lot of money or at least have a lot of platinum be spent if you were to get all of these rad fucking like symbols as emblems or sigils or whatever if you buy these packs because like i'm looking at this and the art asset exists so if you encouraged people to buy it regardless of where they are in warframe like regardless of what mods they have by offering that 
dope looking thing as like an emblem for your Warframe. I know I, for one, as an owner of all of these mods and more endo than I could ever realistically need or use, uh, yeah, I would buy that for that cosmetic a hundred million percent. So please, that would be cool. Uh, I think everybody would be pretty into that. Uh, it would also make these like a lot easier to suggest to a beginner to Warframe because obviously we out here telling people that they should look good like that's just what happens uh so yeah that's just a personal suggestion i think that would be super awesome but i think regardless mod packs going in this direction is much better for the game overall uh and then we have a change to trading this is kind of minor but i figured i would talk about it because i think it is good for the game overall and that is that two-factor authentication is required for trading now so this is email authentication so for those of you that are on the younger end and you maybe don't have a cell phone for like cell phone two-factor this is just through email so you're going to be just fine don't worry about it but when you enable this and you should you'll be able to trade if you do uh, you'll also get an ephemera that I think looks pretty cool, the face step ephemera, uh, from just linking up two factors. So there's really no reason to not do this, and it just helps protect your account. So definitely do that. Besides that, we have a few weapon buffs. Uh, there are more weapon buffs than I have noted here, but these are the ones that I thought to be most important. First and foremost is the gaze kit gun. This is obviously the worst kit gun and i think it still is but they've made it significantly stronger by having this not only have the punch through that it has at base but also it like the atomos chains to multiple targets now it'll chain up to two targets which means that in a multi-enemy scenario this weapon now does triple damage essentially uh so that's really good that's like a fantastic, fantastic news for this kit gun. It'll see considerably more play because it is considerably better now. Uh, so that's very nice. And then for anyone who's into the gun spears, I know many people like them just because they have really, really good idle animation sets. Um, those all got buffed. They have a ton, like there's a big variety of buffs for each one that you have to look into depending on which one you like. But all the gun spears are considerably better now um, just based on the stats that they have made better on them. Uh, and just like various things specifically the ferox i think definitely got the best deal out of all of them but that stuff's all good uh and then besides that ephemera drop chances pretty much across the board seem to have been buffed uh this is of course going to be most important like from the exploiter orb where the drop chances went from six percent to ten percent i know that does not sound like a great deal but a four percent chance increase is pretty nice uh so that is very good and then a huge quality of life buff just overall to everyone who plays Warframe uh, is that Cephalon Samaras is now going to sell old quest blueprints and one-time blueprints. What this means is that if you, for example, you did the Inaros quest, you went through the whole thing, you got the Inaros blueprint, all that good business, but then you sold Inaros for whatever reason. Don't do that. But for whatever reason you did that, now you can go to Samaris and just pay some Samaris rep and get that blueprint back. So now you're going to be able to go through and like if you sold the um, the Broken Scepter, you can get that back whenever you need it, if we ever need it, and a bunch of things like that, just like a bunch of quest things that you might have gotten rid of. There are now going to be ways to get that stuff back. So that's just really good um, and will clean up a lot of these support tickets, I imagine, for people that accidentally sell things and want to get them back. Now you can just go and do that. Uh, and finally, we have an unfortunate note. This note is not great because i don't have clarification on it i want clarification on this which is why i'm bringing it up in this video so i have two things that are listed as fixes in the patch notes and it is fixed chessa retrieve double dipping with necros's desecrate and fixed chessa slash desecrate double dipping with hydroid slash cora here's the thing here's here's what these abilities do Korra and Hydroid both have four abilities that have an augment that give you more drops when enemies are killed when they have interacted with your ult. Okay? And then we have the Chessa Retrieve and Necros's Desecrate that takes dead bodies and then rolls for loot on them. Okay. These two things don't double dip. These are all individual loot abilities what i am getting as information from these fixes 
is that only one of any of these abilities can roll for additional loot when it should almost certainly be that all of these abilities can be used together because why would they not be able to be used together? That just seems logical that you would be able to use multiple Warframes for getting more loot as that would be the reason why multiple Warframes would have the ability to give you more loot. And even more so beyond that, why the Chessa would be able to give you more loot with its new ability. I would really love to know if the clarification on these fixes is just that there was some interaction that made it give you like six times the amount of loot or something, because of course that would be a fix. But if this is a change and it is no longer that all of these abilities can individually give your group more loot, that is a change and a nerf, and that shouldn't be in the fixes section. I would love clarification on what this actually means, and I really hope it's not that they're just nerfing the shit out of all of these loot abilities and throwing it down into the fixes section where fewer people are going to read it. That would be real unfortunate. So, everything in this update, except for that, I'm actually really happy with so far. Everything that I have like done, I'm like pretty solid on overall. Like I have some minor gripes with the new game mode, but of course, like it's not going to be super refined when it comes out. I think the gas city itself and how it looks is phenomenal. Uh, I think the new boss fight, which I'm not going to spoil for anybody, is extremely good with the Ropa list. Um, and like the amalgams are cool new enemies, even if they're like pretty easy to kill. But of course, that's like as, a, as an experienced player, of course, they're going to be easy to kill. They're not like insanely high level or anything like that. Um, and I think the update overall is a success. But this will be a real unfortunate black mark on an otherwise quite good update, I think. So, yeah, hopefully that is not the case. Um, but that is going to do it for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will be doing, of course, like I said, a full video on Wisp and everything I think about her, especially if she receives any changes between now and then. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you later. Again, thank you to Discord for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it. Uh, and goodbye, everybody.